The first time I saw a Python F string, I was really confused. I had no idea what was going on. After a few Google searches later, everything made sense. And if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're a little bit confused or you want to learn the basics of F strings. Well, in this video, I'm going to be going through 12 different examples and use cases of Python F strings. And by the end of this video, you should be able to have this concept down pretty easily. All right, let's start coding. All right, so for our first example, we're going to be using a F string to print out a string. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a variable called name and I'm going to call that, I'm going to set that equal to Nolan, which is my last name. And in the next line, we're going to do just a print statement. So what I'm going to say is print and then Inside over here, we're gonna say F, and this is gonna be for F string. Now, you can use single quotes or double quotes. I like using double quotes. So what we're gonna put in here is just say hello, and then inside over here, we're gonna have curly brackets. Now, you can think of these as like the curly brackets for sets or dictionaries. If you're not too familiar with either of those, no worries, I have videos on them, make sure to check those out. Um, but what we're gonna do inside over here is we're gonna put my name. So Instead of saying Nolan, I can put the variable name over here. Okay. Now I run the cell and you can say it says hello Nolan. So I do want to show that you can also have multiple variables here within an F string. So this is going to be example number two, example two, multiple. And here's how we're going to do that. So I live in Florida. So I'm going to say state equals Florida like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy this print statement over here. And then I'm gonna say after here from, and we're gonna throw in our state. So state like this. And again, feel free to copy my code, put in your own stuff if you really want to. Anyway, whatever makes it learn best for you. And you can see it says, hello, Nolan from Florida. Awesome. Now we can also use methods and uh, functions in here too. So let me show you how we can integrate that. So I'm gonna use the same thing as I had above over here and we'll say example three, hello name, and I'm gonna put upper on here. So upper like this, okay, and hello, and you can see it's all capitalized. And there's a lot of different use cases for this. I just wanna do a basic one like this um, and let's keep moving forward. All right, so now I'm gonna work on a little bit more advanced examples. So we're gonna call this example four. Feel free to skip this one if you want. The rest of the video should be pretty basic, um, but we're gonna use classes. Now, I didn't learn classes right away when I started teaching myself Python, um, and this is more of a beginner level video, but I do have classes on the channel, like about an hour video, I wanna say. So if you wanna learn a lot more about it, check that out. But I feel like this is a good spot to throw classes into uh, just based off of the structure of this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class called player. Now, one of my favorite sports is baseball. I have a lot of references to baseball in the videos. So we're going to create a player class based around that. Now I'm going to have my init over here and like all these inits, we're going to have a self, which is always going to be there. And then we're going to have two, um, attributes essentially. So we're going to have a name and then we're going to have also our team. So a lot more things that a player would have, but we're keeping this video basic. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to call these over here. So self.name equals name. And then we're going to say self.team equals team, which we'll put that over here. The next line is self.team equals team. Now that works, awesome. Next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a player. So I'm gonna say player one equals, and we're gonna put player in here. We're gonna have Ruth, and then we're gonna have Yankees, okay? Babe Ruth, one of the most famous baseball players of all time. And then what I'm gonna do is change this up for player two, and I'll put Williams and Red Sox. And Williams is for Ted Williams. Another really great baseball player. And he's a veteran of uh, World War II and a few other wars, I believe. But okay. So we have two players. We have player one and player two. You can see the self.name, right? So for player one, we're 
assigning the self.name Ruth, and then the self.team being Yankees, associated player one, player two, Williams. Why did I put Ted Williams here? I should have put Red Sox. And I'll just correct that really quick. And Red Sox being with the team. So let me show you how we can actually grab these things from the class with the Python F string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say print like this and then F like that. I'm gonna say player. And what we can do is just grab our player name. So player one dot name. And then we'll say team. And inside over here, we'll have player one dot team. And check this out. Player, Ruth, team Yankees. And I can change this up, right? I, if I wanted to grab player two instead, you just put player two dot name, player two dot team, and grab Williams team Red Sox. Awesome. Now let's look at inline expressions. So this is example five. And what we can do is we can do math directly within a Python F string. So I'm gonna say print F and inside over here, what I'm gonna say is five squared. And then what we're gonna do is square five. So we'll say five star star two. And smart enough to know five squared is 25. You can also define the variables that go into a calculation. So that's gonna be our next example. So what we're gonna say is A equals five, B equals 13, print. And we'll say, what is A times B? Question mark, it's, and then just do the math again. So A times B, and this time we used three of these bracket pairs. What is five times 13? It's 65. All right, so for example seven and eight, we're gonna take a look at format specifiers. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is padding. So example seven is padding. And let's first call x equals five over here. So we have x equals five. And the next thing we're gonna say is print. And inside over here, we're gonna say f. We're gonna say formats. And we're gonna say x, o, two. And if we print that out, you can see it added a zero at the front. Now, let's just copy this code and we'll put like six. And you can see now it added one, two, three, four, five in front of it. Well, it's pretty awesome. Let's take a look at our next example, which is gonna be precision. So this is precision, which is rounding. A little bit different than the one that we just did. This is Eight. Also, let me know if you guys like when I break out these examples or not. Um, I go through a lot of examples in videos and sometimes I don't break out these sections. So if you like that, let me know in the comments or not. But regardless, let's just say X equals 5.1 and I'm just gonna hold down the one key for a while. And we have that there and let's format this. So I'm gonna literally just copy and paste this above, right? And instead of 02, I'm gonna say 0.2. And watch what happens. We just get 5.1. And if I copy that code again, and if I just do this six, right, we'll have five ones at the end. It's a pretty quick way uh, to format anything that has a decimal. Someone asked for something in specific, like round it to two decimal places. You could just use an F string like that. All right, so we're on example nine now, and we're gonna take a look at dates. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna to have to import in date time. So from date time, import date time. And then what I'm gonna say is like a random, I know it's not truly random, but we'll say random date equals date time. And I'll just put 2011, one and one. And then I'll say formatted dates, added dates equals random dates date dot strf time that and we'll say percent b 
B. Well, it needs to be in quotes in here, but we'll have percent B, percent D, and then percent Y. Like That's awesome. And then I'll make a new cell down below. And what I'll do over here is print, I'll see over here, let's put our F string here first, and then date formatted, and then just put in the new dates. So we'll say formatted dates, throw that in here and check it out. Date formatted January 1st, 2011. All right, now we're gonna take a look at dictionaries. So this is example 10. Another thing that I have on the channel. So if you wanna check out my dictionary video, feel free to watch that. But we're gonna go back to our baseball theme and we're gonna create another player. Now, we're gonna have a name in here. And this time I'm gonna put Kershaw, put Kershaw for the Dodgers. Uh, we're gonna put team, we're gonna say Dodgers. And we'll have a number. So number, which is 22. Also pretty good because I have different types, right? I have strings and number. So, or integer, I should say, not number, but either way, uh, we have player over there. And then to print this out, we'll say print, and we'll have an F string, and we'll say all-star, because Kershaw is often an all-star. And inside over here, we'll have player, grab the name, Then we'll have inside of the next one, player team, which I should also specify a few things. I'll start, we'll put player like that. Team like that. It's formatting may be a little weird. And then we'll say number. And we'll throw this in here. So player. All right, I think this should work. All-star player, right? All-star, and we have player Kershaw, team at Dodgers, and then number 22. Sweet. And our next example, 11, is going to be multi-line multi F-strings. So multi-line F-strings. And what we're gonna do is nearly identical what we have over here. So I'm gonna copy this. First thing we're gonna say is name equals Kershaw. Then we'll have our team equal Dodgers. Get rid of these single quotes. And I don't need these commas either. And then lastly, we'll have number equal 22. Like that. Okay. So we have that. Awesome. And then if we want to have this multi-line, we're going to need three double quotes. So what I'll have over here is player equals F. And then we have three this time. And we'll say same thing, name, name, team, team, number, number, okay. And I didn't complete this, so to make sure you put your three at the end. We run that, awesome. And then I'll just print player. So print player. And you can see name, Kershaw, team, Dodgers, number being 22. And to round out this video, we're just gonna do a basic loop. So for I in range, we'll grab threes and sevens, the Queens of the Stone Age song. Say print, string. We'll have number, 
for this i, and then what we'll do is i squared. And I guess I should put example 12. Example 12. And look, three, four, five, six, and it ends at seven. That's why we don't run it there. So to recap this video, there's a lot of use cases for F strings. Ideally, what you need to do is print, start off with F, then if you want it just one line, one pair of double quotes, and you can essentially add in what you want within these brackets over here. The first example, I just showed you a variable name, threw that in there. You can also do multiple variables with this case over here. You can apply methods and functions, right? The upper, threw that in there. Utilize it from classes to get information. Then numbers, like you can do calculations in here. You could also call variables uh, that have numbers and do calculations. You can format stuff or format numbers, uh, showed you with padding as well as precision. You can use it with dates, dictionaries, multi-line, again, three. So three over here and three at the end. It's cleaner, in my opinion, just to call it like this and then print it. Although you could just say print around all that. And lastly, even utilize it within loops. Hope that cleared up any confusion that you had with Python F strings. And if it did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading two to three videos every single week and not just basic Python videos like this. I have a lot that are focused for like data analytics or data science. And eventually I'm going to be making data engineering videos in the future as well. If you want to watch some other Python videos, I have a playlist and other related videos down below in the description. You can check stuff out right over here.